There's going to be some restrictions on the area. And, you know, this is nothing new. Uh, I think when uh, the Red Sox won the championship in a home game um, last, I think, October, on Halloween night, the same restrictions were in place, and, and, and we found this to work very well. It's not about limiting people from celebrating. It's just about safety and controlling uh, any large crowds that could um, gather. You know, what we do um, to sort of control that is we work closely with the bars about issues on over-serving, on, uh, you know, over-capacity. And, and, you know, we've had some dialogue with the bars. Um, we received a letter from the Licensing Commission on some of the rules and, and, and some of the uh, procedures we, we want them to follow to make sure it's a safe event. I'm sure on the paths, but whatever the outcome, in Boston, we're going to put public safety first. We're not going to allow celebrations to become an excuse for dangerous and illegal behavior here in the city of Boston. So that means we're not going to tolerate public drinking. We're not looking at, we're going to not, not to tolerate destruction of property, no climbing on structures or other dangerous behavior, uh, and no interfering with the work of our public safety officers that are going to be out on the street on, set, on Sunday night. We're going to enforce these laws and we'll remain a zero, we'll remain a zero tolerance policy towards illegal acts and dangerous situations. The vast majority of the fans are out to have a good time and, and have fun, a safe time. It only takes a few instigators to create a dangerous situation. I don't want to see a lot of arrests on Sunday night. I want to see a lot of celebration, a lot of happiness. But people need to know that there will be consequences if they make bad choices. Our goal is to minimize the risk of the people and property. So consistent with success of past practices, we are taking steps ahead of time to prevent any problems.